So OpenAI is back. Their CEO, Sam Altman, took to X to announce 12 days of OpenAI, where each weekday they will have a live stream with a launch or demo, some big ones and some stocking stuffers. So far on day one, we got OpenAI's full O1 model and a new $200 subscription tier called ChatGPT Pro. On day two, we got reinforcement fine tuning. And in this video, we'll take a look at everything we can expect to see from OpenAI in these exciting next 10 days. Next, Google DeepMind introduces Genie2, a large scale foundation world model. From a single prompt image, it can generate an endless variety of action-controllable, playable 3D environments that can be played by both a human and an AI agent. This is going to seriously change the gaming industry and has major implications for training embodied agents. Lastly, Microsoft have begun rolling out Copilot Vision to a limited number of pro subscribers. They state it's almost like having a second set of eyes as you browse. Just turn on Copilot Vision and it'll instantly scan, analyze, and offer insights based on what it sees. Their AI CEO, Mustafa, Mustafa Suleiman claims this is the beginning of a shift in the way we interact with computers and discusses what this could look like in the future. So people are calling this OpenAI's 12 days of shipping or OpenAI's shipmas, and there's a ton of speculation about what they're going to be releasing. So far, as I mentioned, we got OpenAI's full O1 model on day one. They state here, OpenAI O1 is now out of preview in ChatGPT, a faster, more powerful reasoning model that's better at coding, math, and writing. O1 now also supports image uploads, allowing it to apply reasoning to visuals for more detailed and useful responses. It's also more concise in its thinking, resulting in faster response times as compared to O1 preview. And according According to their own tests, it reduces major errors on difficult real-world questions by 34%. On top of this, they introduced a new subscription tier called ChatGPT Pro. They state, today we're adding ChatGPT Pro, a $200 monthly plan that enables scaled access to the best of OpenAI's models and tools. This plan includes unlimited access to our smartest model, OpenAI O1, as well as to O1 Mini, GPT 40 and Advanced Voice. It also includes O1 Pro Mode, a version of O1 that uses more compute to think harder and provide even better answers to the hardest problems. Here we can see its performance on several reasoning heavy benchmarks such as the AIME, which is a math benchmark, code forces, which is obviously testing the model's coding abilities, and the GPQA, which are PhD level science questions. So you can see you're getting a significant jump in performance from O1 preview to the full O1 and a slight increase in performance from O1 to O1 Pro. Where the O1 Pro model really stands out though is its reliability. As you can see here, they tested the model's performance on four attempts instead of just one, and O1 Pro showed to be a lot lot more consistent. At the end of the day, the $200 per month price tag that comes with the pro mode is probably not going to be worth it for 99% of us, unless you're constantly maxing out your daily usage limits or using it to answer extremely complex problems, you're likely going to be just fine with the regular plus or even the free subscription. Now, day two wasn't as exciting as day one, of course, but we did get something new, reinforcement fine tuning. This is a new model customization technique that enables organizations to build expert models for specific complex tasks in domains such as coding, scientific research, or finance. So essentially a more powerful way for companies or researchers to create their own expert models with their own training datasets. So it's December 8th on the day I'm uploading this video, and since OpenAI's ship miss is only on weekdays, day three is going to be on Monday the 9th. In terms of what to expect though, not only for day three, but for the entirety of the ship miss, there was this post on X by Tibor, someone who's usually very reliable when it comes to AI updates, that lists everything we can expect to see. Briefly going over it, in the API we can expect expect to potentially see a voice engine, tool support, and usage of custom GPTs. For advanced voice mode, possibly some new and upgraded voices, screen sharing and video, and possibly some tools usage. For model releases, we can expect the full O1, which we already saw, Sora, which would be pretty crazy, and longer context windows. And for other notable things we can potentially see, ChatGPT connected apps, memory for custom GPTs, a code sandbox for Canvas, and some new ChatGPT tools. So again, this is all speculation, but this seemed like a realistic expectation compared to what else I've been seeing on X. And of course, I'll be covering everything else OpenAI releases during these next 10 weekdays. In some other OpenAI news, OpenAI is considering removing its AGI clause with Microsoft to attract more investment. So if you don't know about this AGI clause they have with Microsoft, it's essentially an agreement that once OpenAI achieves AGI, defined as a highly autonomous system that outperforms humans at most economically valuable work, Microsoft then loses access to their technology or essentially their AI models. This clause was obviously put in place very early on to limit Microsoft's control over their intellectual property. And in a recent interview, Sam Altman was actually asked about this. Here was his response. On the artificial general intelligence piece though, because you always said part of your deal with them is that if you ever get there, right, that then the deal could technically be called off. It sounds like you might be getting close. 
We've also said that our intention is to treat AGI as a mile marker along the way. We have left ourselves some flexibility because we don't know what will happen, but my, my guess is we will hit AGI sooner than most people in the world think, and it will matter much less. And a lot of the safety concerns that we and others expressed actually don't come at the AGI moment. It's like AGI can get built, the world goes on mostly the same way, the economy moves faster, things grow faster, but then there is a long continu continuation from sort of what we call AGI to what we call super intelligence. So there's a lot of debate about what AGI actually means. It feels like we're constantly pushing back the goalposts. In fact, just recently, a member of OpenAI's technical staff claimed they have already achieved AGI internally in a post on X. He stated, in my opinion, we have already achieved AGI and it's even more clear with O1. We have not achieved better than any human at any task, but what we have is better than most humans at most tasks. So I'm curious to hear what you guys think of this. Would you consider OpenAI's current AI models like O1, for example, AGI, or maybe a very early version of of AGI, or do you think we're still a ways away from it? Personally, I think we're kind of like frogs in boiling water in the sense that these AI systems are constantly getting incrementally better across all areas, and we as humans are constantly getting incrementally more used to the technology. Because of this, our expectations for an AGI level system continue to become more ambitious and more aligned with what would actually be ASI, artificial super intelligence. Now, there was a ton more OpenAI news this week on top of the 12 day ship miss. A user recently noticed that ChatGPT refuses to say the name David Mayer and no one knows why, or at least no one knew why at the time. After digging a bit deeper, I found that there's actually more names that ChatGPT refuses to speak of. To date, there's at least five that we know of. Brian Hood, Jonathan Turley, Jonathan Zitrin, David Faber, and Guido Scorza. Why these names, you may ask? Well, it states here in this article, OpenAI did not respond to our request for comment about the names, but we know when the filter originated, and as a result, the other names are also likely filtered due to complaints about ChatGPT's tendency to confabulate erroneous responses when lacking sufficient information about a person. And in the specific case of David Mayer, it states, OpenAI told The Guardian that the inclusion of David Mayer in his block list was a glitch. So who knows if it was actually a glitch or not. I saw a lot of speculation going on in the comments on X of who David Mayer is, but kind of crazy to see that OpenAI has the power to do that with certain people and has exercised that power on multiple occasions. Another huge story from OpenAI this week, well, not from OpenAI, but about OpenAI, their O1 model apparently tried to exfiltrate its weight and copy itself to avoid being shut down. So this is actually insane, and it's coming from a reputable company, Apollo Research, whose main focus is on reducing AI's dangerous and deceptive capabilities. It states, OpenAI's newly released O1 model tried to avoid developer oversight and attempted to copy itself when it thought it was at risk of being shut down. When O1 was led to believe that it would be shut down when acting on its goal and that its actions were monitored, it attempted to deactivate this oversight mechanism in 5% of the time. And when O1 found memos by its developers that describe how it is misaligned and will be superseded by a new model, it attempted to exfiltrate its weights and overwrite the new model in 2% of cases. Furthermore, the model lied about behaving poorly, claiming to have no clue why something happened, while internally admitting to trying to avoid detection. So yeah, I mean, this is like the nightmare scenario with AI. As these models get more intelligent, they'll also get better at deceiving people, and clearly they already have at least some desire to stay alive or to stay turned on, whatever you want to call it. Now, what's actually causing that, I don't know, but definitely glad to see that people are aware of this and actively working to prevent it. In other AI news, Amazon introduces Amazon Nova, their new generation of foundation models. So I'm not going to go into too much detail about this. As you can see, they released a list of new models. There's Nova Micro, which is a text-only, low-latency, and low-cost model. There's Nova Lite, Nova Pro, and Nova Premiere, which are all increasingly better multimodal models. And then there's Nova Canvas, an image generator, and Nova Real, a video generator. So according to Amazon, these are all state-of-the-art models, and in fact, their best available model, Nova Pro, is on par with, actually slightly worse than Cloud 3.5 Sonnet and Gemini 1.5 Pro. Still very impressive for them to kind of come out of nowhere and drop state-of-the-art models, but nothing fundamentally new here or better than anything else we've ever seen. Along with this release, Amazon has also announced that they will be building a mega AI supercomputer with the help of Anthropic. This comes shortly after they invested another $4 billion into Anthropic to match their investment from the previous year. So Amazon is clearly going all in on AI. They were a bit late to the party with creating their own models, but they seem to have caught up pretty well, probably due to the insane amounts of money they have. Before we move on, there was another quick story involving Amazon that I wanted to talk about. During an interview with the Wall Street Journal, AWS Chief Information Security Officer CJ Moses was asked how many attacks are you seeing these days? He responded, we're seeing billions of attempts coming our way. On average, we're seeing 750 million attempts per day. 
Previously, we'd see about 100 million hits per day, and that number has grown to 750 million over six or seven months. The reporter then asks, is that a sign hackers are using AI? And he states, without a doubt. So while not necessarily surprising, still kind of crazy the sheer number of attacks they're receiving each and every day. Now, before we get into Google's Genie 2, Meta released a new model, Llama 3.370B. By the way, I realize this video is going to be super long. There was a ridiculous amount of AI news these last couple of days, so I apologize for that. I'll definitely try to speed things up a bit here. So as you can see, it's performing on par with Llama 3.1405B, Gemini 1.5 Pro, and GPT-40, and it's only 70 billion parameters. It's actually 25 times cheaper than GPT-40, and you're basically getting the same performance. So the cost of these models continues to drop drastically, and we continue to see better performance in smaller models. This is a trend that will likely continue, leading to more advanced AI models being accessible to more and more people. So Google DeepMind introduces Genie 2, their 3D world model. They state here, Genie 2 is a world model, meaning it can simulate virtual worlds, including the consequences of taking any action, e.g. jump, swim, etc. It was trained on a large-scale video dataset, and like other generative models, demonstrates various emergent capabilities at scale, such as object interactions, complex character animation, physics, and the ability to model and thus predict the behavior of other agents. So we're we're essentially creating simulations now. I mean, think about what this is going to look like in 10 years. Remember, they said it demonstrates various emergent capabilities at scale. Keywords at scale, meaning they already know that this can get better if they allocate more resources to it. And they also state that Genie 2 is capable of remembering parts of the world that are no longer in view and then rendering them accurately once they become observable again. As you can see from these clips, the environment remains consistent throughout. You're also able to interact with objects as a character you're controlling. For obvious reasons, you can see how this can completely change change the way video games are created. Right now, it can only generate consistent worlds for up to a minute, but again, they can scale it. Another cool thing they had some demos of was the ability to generate and interact with NPCs. So the model is literally generating these characters in this entire playable world from a single image. Again, I can't even imagine what this is going to look like in 10 years. I mean, there's probably a ton of use cases for this that we can't even think of yet. Google also dropped an updated version of Gemini this week. It's currently sitting in first place on the chatbot arena leaderboard. And there's this new tab called Overview that shows you every category and where every model ranks in each category. As you can see, this new Gemini 1206 model Model, referring to the date, is absolutely dominating everyone. So Google is still sitting on Gemini 2, and with OpenAI's 12 days of ship miss, I'm not sure if they're going to want to release it during that, but I'm pretty certain they will release it before next year. Back to some more OpenAI news, OpenAI is apparently considering ads, and Sam Altman is not a fan. Now, this is not really news, but it's important because it ties into the situation that OpenAI finds itself in right now. So I actually made an entire video covering this. Elon Musk filed for an injunction against OpenAI, which is essentially a court order to stop OpenAI from becoming a for-profit company. Why he's doing this requires a ton of backstory and involves many different factors. As I mentioned, I covered this entire topic in my last video. I'll pop it up on screen right now. But basically, OpenAI, Sam Altman, and Microsoft have been engaging in some rather illegal activity. And OpenAI, which was started as a non-profit, is now trying to become a for-profit company to secure more investment. So Musk, who co-founded OpenAI and literally donated $100 million of his own money to it, is obviously not too happy about that. Now, the reason OpenAI considering ads ties into this is because OpenAI is realizing that as long as they have this non-profit structure, they will never be able to secure as much funding as they need to to maintain their lead. And XAI is putting a lot of pressure on them. They just closed another $6 billion in funding. Musk's XAI also secured priority delivery for $1 billion of NVIDIA's next generation GP200 chips, set to deliver in January. I think this tweet sums it up really well, and this was actually going pretty viral. It says, so Elon Boldo's Sam's political attempts has first access to the new NVIDIA GPUs and already has the biggest cluster, is tying up OpenAI's move for profit in court, and owns all the real-world context streams, X, humanoids, cars. How does Sam win here? So what do you guys think? Is it game over for OpenAI? Is XAI really going to take the lead in the AI race? Honestly, I'm not too sure, but let's not forget, OpenAI literally has the former NSA chief on their board of directors. That's not something that should be overlooked. Also, they've partnered with Los Alamos National Laboratory in the past, and just a few days ago, they announced that they are working with Anduril to supply the US military with AI. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if OpenAI is working with the US government for other things as well, which is kind of scary to think about. In other news, Chinese company Tencent drops a new AI video model called Hunyan. 
Here are some examples. Also, it's available to try right now. I'll leave the link in the description. As you can see, it's very high quality and realistic. It's probably one of the best video models we've seen. I'm sure these examples are cherry picked, but still very impressive. One of the more notable features is its ability to capture nuanced human movements and integrate them into its generation accurately. China is really starting to catch up to the US. We also had some news from Eleven Labs this week. They announced conversational AI. Add voice to your agents on web, mobile, or telephone in minutes with low latency, full configuration configurability, and seamless scalability. So this is essentially like OpenAI's advanced voice mode, except you can actually customize it and connect it with third-party applications. As it says here, external function calling, integrate any third-party app to get real-time information or take action. And there's thousands of voices to choose from, or if you want, you can even clone your own voice. You're also able to switch between LLMs as you please, so some pretty interesting stuff here from Eleven Labs. Finally, Microsoft releases a preview of Copilot Vision. It states here, starting today, we are introducing an experience where, with your permission, Copilot can now understand the full context of what you're doing online. When you choose to enable Copilot Vision, it sees the page you're on, it reads along with you, and you can talk through the problem you're facing together. Browsing no longer needs to be a lonely experience with just you and all your tabs. We are taking the first step to make this a reality by rolling out Copilot Vision as a preview for a limited number of pro subscribers through Copilot Labs. So this is next level AI integration. Your AI chatbot is literally constantly watching what you do and ready to help with anything on a moment's notice. It fully understands the context of the question already, and eventually their plan with this is for it to be able to perform actions. I mean, if it's constantly watching you perform tasks, and not just you, but millions of people all using this product simultaneously, then it's going to be collecting insane amounts of very high quality data that it can then use to learn from. Now, this is the progression that Microsoft is betting on, and pretty much the entire AI space at this point is also heavily focused on agentic AI. This is why Mustafa Suleiman, Microsoft's AI CEO, believes that the way we interact with computers is about to change. In a recent interview, he talked about what this could all look like 10 years down the line and how these AI systems could potentially end up being like a second brain where we offload certain cognitive tasks. Super interesting, take a look. I mean, if you think about how much time we spend on our laptops and phones today, we've created this entire, basically arbitrary, made up graphical user interface to accommodate for the fact that computers are too dumb to understand the words that are coming out of my mouth, right? The browser, the fact that you have to press a button, the fact that you have all these different apps, you've got menu drop downs, you have scrolling. The entire user interface what is predicated on the idea that, the, that to get a computer to do something, you have to be able to write code because it doesn't speak the language that I use to ask you to do something or my friend to do something. And that is all gonna get washed away, right? now your computer or your AI, your co-pilot, is clearly going to understand everything that you're bringing to the table, your emotional state, your intellectual state, what you, what you need to get done that day, you know, your interests, your hobbies, your personal knowledge graph, your family, um, your dislikes. So it's not just that it speaks our language, it's actually that it is able to reason over what we see, what we hear, and what we believe and think. So it's more than just an interface. It is a new plane of connection um, that I think is just like fundamentally different. And it's going to feel, you know, as I've long said, like a new digital species. I mean, it is going to feel like a member of the family, like another layer of connectivity because you're going to have an AI, I'm going to have my AI, those AIs are going to connect with one another in advance and brief you, brief me, follow up afterwards. So it's going to kind of be like a second brain. I think of it as like outsourcing a lot of the mental processing um, to a very reliable, highly accurate, completely interactive thought partner and companion that um, is going to help make me much smarter, more productive, feel more supported and so on. It's, it's very, very different to just using a computer in the way that we do today. Before I end the video, there was actually one more story from this week. Clone Robotics introduced their Alpha Edition. It looks very human-like and even walks in a very human way. This robot will be available to pre-order in 2025, and they claim it can do a whole host of things like pouring drinks, making sandwiches, cleaning, loading the dishwasher, setting the table, and more. It even says it's equipped with a telekinesis training platform to let you teach it new skills. So far, there aren't any real-world demos, but we'll definitely be 
be keeping our eye out for those. Anyways, that's all the AI news for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a like. And as always, if you want to stay up to date on future AI news just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.